Hello, I'm Adam Keelick, the principal attorney at the Keelick Law Firm in Bedford, Texas, where I help clients with employment law, family law, and litigation needs. Today's video is going to be a brief overview of minimum wage and overtime laws within Texas, uh, specifically the federal and state laws that apply. Uh, first, we'll talk about minimum wage, how that's calculated, and some issues that affect that calculation. Second, we'll talk about overtime pay, how that's calculated, and some issues that uh, deal with overtime pay. And then we'll talk about uh, some of the remedies that are available to you if your employer is not paying you minimum wage or overtime as they're required to by law. So just as an introduction, when we talk about minimum wage law in Texas, what we see is the federal law really controls with regard to setting the minimum wage and overtime calculations. And these are set by the Fair Labor Standards Act at the federal level. Now we also have the Texas Payday Law, and that's the state level law that's similar to the Fair Labor Standards Act, but in many ways merely says whatever the Fair Labor Standard Act says, that's what applies here too. So we really tend to look at federal law as guiding uh, all of the, the legal issues involving minimum wage and overtime in Texas. When we think about these two issues, although they're often closely related because they set the minimum rate of pay for uh, both hours under 40 and hours over 40, uh, we tend to think about these as one in the same, but there's really two separate calculations and two separate issues that arise under the way that those, those amounts are calculated. And the last introductory point before we move into talking more specifically about the minimum wage calculation is that the minimum wage and overtime provisions only apply to non-exempt employees. That means any employee who is accurately uh, defined as an exempt employee uh, does not have to be paid on the same minimum wage and does not have to be paid overtime pay although there are minimum payments that have to be made to some types of uh, salaried exempt employees. These laws also do not apply to independent contractors and really uh, we're talking about just independent contractors that are lawfully defined as independent contractors. It's not enough under the Fair Labor Standards Act that your employer has said you're exempt or you're an independent contractor. There are specific legal tests that have to be met in order for you to qualify under either uh, classification that would be exempt from these minimum wage and overtime provisions. But let's assume that you are a non-exempt hourly employee and the Fair Labor Standards Act and Texas payday law applies to you then let's talk about what that minimum wage is. The minimum wage is the minimum rate of pay. It's the lowest possible rate of pay you can be paid per hour for your first 40 hours of work within a work week. And the minimum rate of pay that you have to be paid is $7.25 for each hour, unless uh, one of a couple of exceptions applies. One of those exceptions is if you're a tipped employee. Tipped employees may be paid $2.13 per hour with a tip credit so long as the tip credit covers the difference between $2.13 an hour and $7.25 for each hour of work. Um, this provision often applies to tipped employees in service industries. Well, really, they're the only tipped employees under the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, tipped employees do not have to be paid this lower tip credited number, but most employers who have tipped employees do pay them at the lower rate and let the tips offset um, that tip credit. An employer may have to pay uh, the higher minimum, uh, minimum wage at $7.25 if they act in a way that destroys their ability to take the tip credit 
um, such as violating uh, tip pool statutes or, or regulations. Um, they can also be required to pay the higher amount if the employee receives tips but uh, does not meet the requirements for the tip credit in the first place. These are a lot of really complicated rules and um, sometimes the facts of the situation can determine whether or not an employee is eligible to be paid on that tip credit basis. And so we won't drill too much into that on this video. That could be a good subject for a separate video. And there's some more information on my uh, website that deals specifically with tipped employees and how employers can violate minimum wage provisions by, uh, by their actions, but still paying this $2.13 an hour. Uh, second, an employee can be paid below seven, uh, the seven twenty-five an hour uh, for certain types of underage employees. Um, there are very unusual and sp but specific regulations under the Fair Labor Standards Act that allows employers to pay minor employees less than the full $7.25 per hour for some or all of their work. Um, and so they may find themselves being paid at a lower rate. Although, just like the tipped employees, the employer does not have to pay the lower rate. They can choose to pay the full $7.25 an hour or even a higher rate of pay to those employees. While we're talking about student workers, though, we should talk briefly about internships and how that's affected under the minimum wage provisions of the Fair Labor Standards Act. Not everybody who's called an intern is necessarily a lawful unpaid intern. There are, again, specific tests under the law that determine whether or not that person is eligible uh, to work unpaid by the employer in an internship type setting. Any employer who violates that test but has unpaid workers owes those workers minimum wage and overtime to the extent that overtime applies. And again, uh, way too specific, uh, way too much involved in that discussion for what we want to do today. So I'm sure there will be another video exploring that. There's also, again, plenty of information on my website discussing that. But let's assume that you're an employee who makes at least $7.25 per hour and you're working more than 40 hours within a work week. If you are working more than 40 hours within a work week and you're an hourly non-exempt employee, you are eligible to receive overtime pay. Now, overtime pay is not calculated against the $7.25 per hour unless you only receive minimum wage as your normal rate of pay. Overtime pay entitles you to payment of one and a half times your regular rate of pay for each hour worked over 40. Now calculating the regular rate of pay for many employees is very simple. Whatever hourly rate you normally receive is probably your regular rate of pay as calculated under the Fair Labor Standards Act. But some employees receive different rates of pay depending upon the type of work that they're performing for the employer. Um, they may also receive certain types of bonuses or commissions or other forms of pay beyond their normal hourly rate that may be calculated within that regular rate of pay for overtime under the Fair Labor Standards Act. And again, this is an area too complex to go into for this video, but something that, that I will explore in other videos. Um, and again, there's information about this already on my website if you're looking for more. But let's assume that we figured out what your rate of, uh, rate of pay is and your regular rate of pay. You're going to get one and a half times that regular rate of pay for each hour worked over 40. Um, figuring out who is entitled to overtime pay is very simple. If you're entitled to at least minimum wage under uh, the Fair Labor Standards Act, you're entitled to this one and a half times regular rate of pay overtime under the Fair Labor Standards Act with one exception. And that exception is a very limited exception 
for salaried but non-exempt employees. This is a very strange pay system in which an employee is not exempt, um, but they are paid a salary. And there are very technical details about how an employee can be paid in that manner. But if you are paid in that manner lawfully, then you're only entitled to half of your regular rate of pay for overtime pay. So that means um, if under your non-exempt salary, your normal rate of pay is calculated out to $20, you're only going to receive $10 for each hour of overtime that you work compared to an employee who's paid on a normal hourly basis, who's paid $20 an hour, uh, their overtime rate of pay is going to be $30, which is one and a half times the normal rate for each hour of overtime. So it is different. Uh, there's a very small number of employees who are actually paid on that salary, non-exempt pay structure. Most employees who are eligible for overtime work under the normal system where they're going to get one and a half times. But if you're not entitled to minimum wage under the Fair Labor Standards Act, uh, you're not otherwise entitled to overtime pay unless your employer just loves you and wants to pay you extra or you work under a contract that mandates that overtime pay. But let's assume that maybe something has gone wrong and your employer is not paying you the minimum wage or overtime that you're entitled to then we've got to talk about what remedies are available to you. Uh, litigation on wages is actually a fairly common area in employment law. And this is especially true for tipped employees where employers are uh, taking advantage of the tip pool or otherwise undercutting their employees' wages. Um, overtime pay issues where the employer is either under calculating the regular rate of pay or not paying the overtime. Uh, this happens a lot in office settings where employees are told to clock out, but there's still work to do, so they're working off the clock. If you're working off the clock, you're still working. You're entitled to pay for that time. Um, there's also a fair amount of litigation on wage issues for improperly classified salaried workers, uh, independent contractors, and unpaid interns. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're being underpaid against the minimum wage and overtime provisions of the Fair Labor Standards Act, you do have some remedies. Um, you can file a complaint with the Department of Labor, um, but in my opinion, the Department of Labor often does not do uh, a very in-depth issue or in-depth work uh, investigating these claims. Um, sometimes they do though, and when they get involved in uh, an investigation, they do tend to be very thorough and uh, really sit down to go through the records. But a lot of times the investigators seem not to refer their case for further investigation. And so that can be a problem for the employees. Uh, your other option is to go talk to an attorney who can review the situation and look at your options to either um, send demand letters out to the employer and get this resolved or file suit and resolve it that way if necessary. Uh, many employers will often respond well to a demand letter and try to work out the issue, particularly if it's something small or an issue where maybe a payroll clerk didn't fully understand the law and the employer will take the opportunity to correct things um, if they're put on notice that there's a problem out there. Um, the difference, of course, is if the DOL acts on your behalf, they're not charging you anything, whereas an attorney needs to get paid for their work. And so um, the attorney is going to get paid in some manner. But if you do have to litigate a wage issue like this, um, you are entitled to a number of remedies. You're entitled to any lost pay that you should have received. You're also entitled to double that amount or at least will be entitled to double that amount in uh, the majority of cases. Um, you're also entitled to recover attorney fees and court costs. And so that can help offset the cost of hiring an attorney and getting that attorney to help you get the pay that you are entitled to. And if for some reason you're fired for 
um, raising the issue with your employer or filing uh, a complaint with the Department of Labor. You can also receive further remedies for your loss of job or whatever the, uh, the form of retaliation is uh, through court too. So that may be some additional wages um, that you did not receive because you were fired or demoted or whatever. Um, so there's definitely some powerful remedies available to you. Um, if this is something that has happened to a number of employees, it may be an issue that becomes a class action that can put some more teeth to your claims and help you get a favorable result out of your employer. But that's really the, the basics behind minimum wage and overtime. Um, certainly we have left out a lot of the exceptions, a lot of the issues about uh, who is exempt from the minimum wage and overtime provisions and uh, that's something that we'll explore in the future but this is a good introductory video and uh, we'll see those other topic topics explored separately in the meantime if you're looking for information as i've said there is other information on my website and links to that will be found below in uh, the text underneath the video but that seems like a good stopping point so we'll stop here i want to thank you for listening i hope some of this information was useful um, if you believe that you're not being paid wages or overtime that you are entitled to, I would encourage you to talk to a local employment attorney. Let that attorney review your issue and see what they can do to help you out. Well, again, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next video.